And I remember one time, this sweet sister gave me some beautiful advice. When I first got to Hollywood and I first got to Parker's and we went out for lunch, and her name was Vivica Frank. She said, check this out. You better get you some bitches that can roll like you can roll because you'll find yourself always paying for the bitches because everybody's going to look to you like you're the bitch with the money. She said, so find you some sisters that can roll like you roll. Well, I appreciated that. So I found me some sisters that can roll like I roll. Though I didn't drop off my my friends that I knew were my friends, I will say this, there was a time that they could have dropped me off because I got to a place called Hollywood and I was like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm out here now. So I wasn't always the greatest friend to my friends. Cindy can attest to that. Michelle can attest to that. Robin can attest to that. But these are people that are truly my friends because through it all, we're still together. So I'm saying all that to say this. When I watched The Real, and I had to watch it for myself, I didn't want anybody saying, I heard. Because I don't play that I heard, it's unfair. Because that's when stories can get mixed up and confused. So I had to watch it for myself because the first time I saw the clip, I only saw the clip with our baby, uh, what's her name, a a a what, what's the baby name? Adrian. I only saw that clip. And when I responded to the clip, I responded the way I still respond. That baby gets a pass because she's too young to even begin to understand what the fight is for. So I understand her making the comment. It's like, listen, y'all, I'm on TV. I want to secure my place. I want to let people know I have a voice. So here it goes. So with that baby, she does get a pass. She gets a pass. However, the producer did call from the real. I'm sorry, sent an email mm -hmm. saying that whenever we would like to come on, we're more than welcome. They're down for hiatus, but they go back up in September, and we're more than welcome to come on. And we're going to take them up on that. So someone else called me and said, yo, did you hear Kim Whitley? And I was like, no. And they were pretty pissed off because it's somebody that knows both of us. And it was like, yo, I'm, I'm kind of fucked up because she was talking greasy about you. And I was like, Kim Whitley? So he said, you got to go watch the clip. So I watched this clip. And I watched Kim Whitley when they asked her, what do you feel about what Monique said? And she says, she's like the fourth supreme. And she's like that aunt that just won't let it go. Now I'm watching your sister say it on her mind, right? And I, I said, okay, this is a person that we've had a friendship. This is a sister that we've gone to both of those homes. We've broken bread together. This is a sister. And when I watched her, and then she said, well, what I know about Oprah, everything is always good intentions. For the three or four years I've been on her network, she always operates from love. Okay. But I'm watching you be shitty. And that's the best word I can give. Shitty. <laughs> it's shitty. I don't want to say messy. Fuck it. It was shitty. Okay. So I'm watching your sister be shitty. And I'm saying to myself, are you trying to secure a position on the wheel? Because the sister you're speaking about that's the fourth supreme, the sister that you're speaking about that need to let shit go, I'm the same sister that you called up and wanted advice from me and my husband because you were being mistreated by your representation. And they wanted you to go into a meeting with a woman who happened to be white, who had never been on TV before, but they wanted you to go in there and sell yourself to this woman. So it was me and Sydney that Kim called up and said, y'all, this ain't right. And I said, no, it's not right, sister. And when you go into that meeting, you have to ask that woman, what are you bringing to the table? Because you know my resume. We're those people. I'm the same sister. And see, I think these conversations are important because a lot of us want to get to Hollywood. A lot of us want to go, but sometimes, baby, you don't know what you're really walking into because no one had these conversations with me. Kim Whitley is the same sister that we would go on walks in the mountains. And this wasn't one walk, two walks. This was something we did. And this is a sister that when we would go on those walks, she would cry on my shoulder and we would cry together just talking about life. 
This is the same sister that said to me, as we got to the top of the mountain one day with tears coming down her eyes, Monique, you have everything. And I said, Kim, I don't have everything. I'm just happy with what I had. But I don't have everything. There's some shit with me that you know about. But, so let's not do that where you're feeling like I have everything because I don't. I'm that sister, Kim Whitley. I'm the sister that you called the night that Joshua's mother had him in the hospital. I'm her. And you said, Monique, she don't want to take this baby home. I don't know what to do. And I said, Kim, that baby could change your life. That baby could make a big difference. Now, I don't know if she called Oprah that night. I don't know how many long, long time sister Oprah been on. I don't know how many times she's had to call Oprah up and say, hey, I need some advice because they're treating me wrong. I don't know. But what I will say is this. It is disheartening. When you do watch someone sit on international television all over the world that you've actually had in your home, you've been in her home, y'all have had intimate, real conversations, and you say, was this you trying to get a spot? Or is this how you really feel, sister? Because now you start questioning, what were those walks? Were those walks genuine? Or were those walks, bitch, you the it girl right now? And you the bitch I want to be seen with. I'm the same girl. When you say let it go, and when you say she the auntie that holds on to shit, I'm the same one that on the day of the Oscars, Al Roker, right, wanted to come do an interview with me. We want to see what your day looks like the day of the Oscars. I said, okay, baby, I start out with a walk. Me and Kim Whitley, we walk, we climb the mountain. And those producers said, no, 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 no. We just want it to be you and Al. And I said, no, 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 no. Y'all caught me up. Y'all want to come and see what I'm doing. This is what I do. Me and my sister, we go, we go find work. When the production crew got there, they still tried to push Kim Whitley out. I said, guys, I told y'all when you called, this is what me and my sister do. So if you want to talk, I ain't got no problem with it, but she ain't going nowhere. I'm the same sister that when we went for a walk and we were with Valerie Goodlove. She's a legend, iconic journalist, writes to Jack, you know, powerful sister, beautiful sister. When we go for our walk and we're talking about the whole campaign and everything, and Kim Whitley was saying, I understand what you're saying and you write. So it's, when I say friends, how many of us have them? For me, the lesson that I'm learning is, I've got to be more careful. And I don't want to stop being vulnerable, Dad. I don't want to, when I say vulnerable, I don't want to become that person that i got to shut it down because you might not be good or you might not be good or you might have another motive. Because what I will say is, Kim Whitley knows what her life is, as I know what it is. And never will I say anything mean about my sister. Though we don't have a friendship, she's still my sister. And I would not intentionally say anything that I thought would put my sister in a bad way. Still won't do it. But what I will say is, we got to pay attention to the word friend. Because it's been thrown around so much recently with me. I've heard people, I'm your friend, that's my friend, that's my friend. And in dealing with Kim Whitley, and I have to have the conversation, and I know people are saying, oh God, Monique, why? Because some of us go to our graves, y'all. And we go to our graves in pain. We go to our graves suffering. We go to our graves with things that have been put on our name that's never been cleared up. And we're afraid to stand up. And when I see my sister sit on that show and talk about what she knows about Oprah's intentions, Kim, you remember our conversations that we had about Oprah Winfrey. So when you open up that can of worms and when you get on a stage and now you gotta, I gotta be I'm on her network, so I gotta, she shows love. But that one right there gotta be careful. Monique and Sydney. We're the people, Kim, that when you came to our home and you had Joshua and you said, 
Girl, I think he got eczema. And I said, bitch, have you put some moisturizer on him? And she said, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do? Yeah. We're the same people. So when I see women that has shared intimate moments with me and my family, you've been in my space. I've been in your space. And someone put, oh, they were just jokes. No, that's not just a joke. Because Kim Whitley and I know where we sit with one another. She knows that. And when you now have to say it publicly, let me explain why I feel the way I feel. And then I saw a meme that she put out there, the one with our sister Whitney, when she was like, girl, go ahead with that. Just her hand gestures. And I'm like, sister, I have empathy for you. And there was a time in my life that I would have called up I'm coming over, and we could raise do this, bitch. There was a time in my life that I would have been that. But at this time in my life, what my husband is showing me, teaching me, nurturing me with is, Mama, you have to have empathy. And not, I'm not saying you got to sympathize, but you have to have empathy because there are times in your life, there are things you've done and said, and you wish that, oh, okay, I fucked that one up where you had to be shown empathy. So when y'all say to me, when I see you in the comments, when I get the Twitter responses, when I get the Instagram responses, it's from a few. But when you say, why in the fuck is your husband always right there? My response would be, where's yours? Where's yours? See, Kim Whitley, I'm the same one you called up. Remember the day you called me up and you was like, girl, I gotta tell you something, but I can hear the nervousness in your voice. And you said there was this fine ass man pulling up next to me in a convertible. And I didn't know it was Sydney. And I was trying to get myself together once I knew. Now, that has nothing to do with anything. It That's don't. just extra shit it to lay on shit. top of. But I'm going to tell you why. Because when it is that shit, daddy, you like, you going to sit up with bitch. Do you know me? This me and you. This me and you. This is me and you where I had to stop fooling with you for a little while. Because you didn't understand the definition of friendship. And at the time, I didn't have the patience nor the tech to deal with someone that I'm looking at you and I'm knowing you're doing some foul shit. So I didn't have to tap that. Until my husband said to me one day, Mom, y'all gotta have y'all are sisters in the game. And if it can be fixed, go on and work it out. I made the call. She says to Sydney personally, I'm so glad you got involved because Kim knew I was done. But he got involved and worked us out and nurtured our friendship for us to watch that. So for Kim Whitley, sister, the reason why we had to say it publicly, because you felt comfortable enough to talk publicly in a joke. But if ever you want to sit down for real, guess what we're going to be? Right here on Monique and Cindy's open relationship. <laughs>